Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Heart. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there will be. And you're listening to the Smacked Raw Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Smack Trial Podcast. This is your Friday night host, Sebastian. The phenomenal one, as they call me. Here. I have Kyle, three man crew for the first time. I've never done this. I got Kyle. First time I've recorded with him on a SmackDown in like six weeks or something. It's been a minute. And, and yeah. my semi normal Kev. Kev, you've been with me a few times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How y'all doing tonight? I'm doing dude, great, dude. man. Is this the loose ship you run? You don't even hit our tagline. The one-stop shop for all your WWE, I'm, AEW, I'm, NXT recaps, reviews, pay-per-view predictions. I'm, I'm getting to it. I worked my way there. <laughs> oh, my bad. My bad. Uh, Scratch yeah. that. Chill out, boss, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but since Kyle's so jumpy, this is your one-stop <laughs> shop for all things AEW, <laughs> WWE, and NXT. Uh, whether you're... Pay-per-view reviews, post shows, recaps, whatever you want to call them. We do pay-per-view predictions, throwbacks, a little bit of everything here. Um, tonight we are re- recapping our January 24th episode of SmackDown, our go-home show for Go Royal Rumble. Um, yes, sir. Real quick, you can get us on YouTube. Please hit that like and subscribe. Yes. You can get us on Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. Um, I think it's just anyone? I think it's called Apple Podcast now. Oh, is it? What? I, I don't know. That's what Vince told me. He said they changed the name to Apple Podcast. I, I think it's word for it. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. Literally, <laughs> their responses could not be more on top. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love for Vince. I love for Vince. <laughs> but guys, our uh, go home show tonight. Are you any more excited for the Rebel? How how is? How do you make yourself more excited for the Royal Rumble? It's like the only right. show. I see people complaining about the build. It's like the only show you don't need build for. Thanks. How do you how do you build excitement for a Royal Rumble match? You what you know what you do is you don't you declare. have a Royal Rumble match. Yeah, you have the match, and you don't <laughs> need everybody declaring themselves. Part of the fun of the Rumble match is not knowing who's going to be in it. So yeah. I see the complaints about the women, you know, the women's not getting any focus on their rumble match. Dude, that's the best part. That's the best part, like not knowing. Because once you have like, because on the men's side, we know about a third of the people now have declared themselves. Ah, uh, more than that. Uh, yeah. 24 yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. So um. like I'm saying, it's it's a lot better to not know who it is because the surprise entrance is the most fun. Uh, well, yeah. the main difference between them, though, is the men usually has two or three surprises if you remember we've only had two women so far and i think a third of them has been like surprise entrance so yeah it's harder to it's harder to get those names out there ahead of time when i mean i don't like saying but heck Becky and lynch said it uh sometimes the pool is kind of shallow you know what i mean yeah but um (laughs) that is one time i want to get into uh especially when i get to Lacey evans stuff but this, I will admit, I, I don't like detail stuff on here. The Kyle knows that. But, and I am kind of awkward getting to the uh, rundown. So, this is something new. I'm debuting the SmackDown, ru- the phenomenal SmackDown Rundown. Okay? God damn. You told me, man. Call. I have a graphic uh, right now. I no, have a gra- Hold on. That's awesome. <laughs> hold on. Give me a second. Give me a second. He said the Sebastian's. No, no, no it's no. the phenomenal SmackDown rundown. Right? Okay, hold on, hold on. Already, already. Go ahead. Sebastian's cutting promos. Right <laughs> yeah, now. bro. Oh my god. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> the phenomenal. How do you, how do you spell phenomenal? The P H E N O L I N A L. SmackDown rundown. Okay, uh, and then and then what we'll do is what we'll do is we'll make it we'll make it, yeah, we'll make it white. white. We'll blow it up <laughs> right here, and then I'm just gonna flash it a bunch of times on screen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. I got us a graphic. Um, nice. Cut down right now. And for future references, this is gonna be. I'm gonna say a match. I'll go over the finish. But that's about it. And if a promo needs a little more detail, I'll add it. But cool. less detail as possible. Okay. Okay. Alright. Like we opened up tonight. Six man tag. We got the bloodline. Roman Reigns goes versus Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler and Bar- <clears throat> Robert Roode. 
Uh, it was a fun match. They got a lot of time, around 25 minutes, I'd say. The crowd was hot. Yeah, they was. Uh, midway for them, not even midway, it was kind of early. Jimmy gets taken out. Uh, Dolph hits him against the steps. They took him out. I, I thought it was a head injury that was playing off just the way it looked, but it was his knee, apparently, commentary says. Uh, later on, he comes back, gets the hot tag, chaos breaks, Roman and Baron go into the crowd. Jimmy set up for the splash when he come back. Dolph tries to stop him. Can't do it. Uh, Robert Roode gets the splash. One, two, three. Like I said, fun match. Pretty good. It's not often often we open with a match on SmackDown, so it's nice to see. Uh, the next 20, 25 minutes was the Lacey Evans show. She gets a promo, and this where, is where I'll get a little detailed. Uh, she she pulls on your heartstrings a little bit, talks about her upbringing, her dad being, the, you know, depressed and stuff like that and he unfortunately couldn't win that battle lost a battle to win it to addiction oh was not, it not not just oh, a, not just depression okay. but addiction yeah okay uh yeah and that and you know she's trying to be a role model trying to show people that you know if you have a rough upbringing you can still do anything you dream of pretty much uh and the crowd ate it up the crowd was uh pretty into it are you going to come back to these segments because i definitely want to speak on this one personally. yes yes you yeah are? i'm okay. gonna come back okay yeah, cool yeah. cool cool yeah, yeah that's just getting the results out of the way before i got you you're doing the old wcw thing okay yeah <laughs> just <laughs> <not yet. laughs> but um bailey attacks her we get a little brawl they break it we go backstage carmella and dana brooke announce that they're gonna be in the royal rumble match um again we cut to Lacey and Bailey brawl and they interrupt, get broken up again. Uh, we come back, Mella, or, or, uh, Fire and Desire, Alexa and Nikki going to have a tag match. Interrupted right at the start of the again by Lacey Evans <laughs> and Bailey. Uh, I had a little bit of a gripe with that, and that's what we'll get to in a little bit. Um, after that, we had Braun and Elias. This was Elias's first match since. Could you guys guess? Got a date for you. You do have a date for this? Yeah. Um, I'm going to go on record and say September of 2019. I'll say. I'll do uh, uh, October. October 2019. Kyle's the winner. September 9th. Yes. It's <laughs> Damn. Yes. So, let's see. Four months? Four months since right we've had a loss in a ring. Um, January. Yeah, damn. All right. Yeah. But they're facing uh, Shinsuke and Cesaro. Sorry. Facing Shinsuke and Cesaro. Finishing moments where Sammy trying to give his team a chair. He got stopped by a loss. Cesaro turns around, eats the power slam, and then a really nice looking elbow from uh, oh my God. Elias. Well, I just got the hell. You 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 mentioned to us in the group check. Have you? He channeled his inner uh, macho man. Macho man. With yeah, that inner one. inner savage. His inner <laughs> savage. There we go. But that was after brutal. The, after this, New Day shown in the back. Big E oiled up. I mean, he is. Uh, <laughs> can we? This deserves a moment. This does not deserve a gloss over. <laughs> this well, man. It was a gloss over. All right. <laughs> this I'm gonna I'm take. I just want to take the reins on this one because well, if ahead. there was any segment I wanted to cover, this would be the one. Okay. Biggie Big e in the back is pictured, baby oiled up to the max, like <laughs> dripping in baby oil, and then he's got like a helper guy, just checking him over, grabbing his legs and slipping off of him, and like. Hugging the waist, and you could feel how gross this had to be. It's not just like oh my he grabbed God. <laughs> you just know, like, just that feeling had to have been terrible. And then Big E to, to thank him gave him a kiss on the forehead, which I thought was a very I, nice touch. It was so good. <laughs> and uh, what what happened? Kofi came in and asked him what he was doing, and he said, <laughs> yeah. If you if you're greasy, you can't get tossed out easy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. All right, continue. I just wanted that segment. Go ahead. <laughs> no, it was great, man. It was. I, I cracked that episode of song. But uh, after that, we had Morrison and Kofi. A really fun match, I thought. Uh, they probably got around 12, 12-ish minutes. It was fun. Um, I definitely recommend ch checking it out. The finish came. Uh, Morrison tried to get a cheek pin, fell on the rope. Big E knocked him off. Miz comes over and hits Big E. He gets chased. Miz is on the apron. Takes a trouble, trouble in paradise. Kofi turns around, takes a kick to the face, and then the uh, Starship Pain is what they oh, call yeah. it on commentary. Um, 
Morrison spinning, springboard, spinning, moonsault, however you want to explain it there. It's a springboard, it's a springboard corkscrew moonsault. Yeah, corkscrew. Yeah, yeah that's better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's quick, got a starship pain. Whatever it is. Quick question. You guys, you guys like that move? I do. I loved it. Man, I hate that move. I hate it. Man, it's I like, hate you. It's like the least devastating looking move. It's it's like one step above the Bailey to belly. Like, as far <laughs> as damage looking. Like, it doesn't... I mean, hell, actually, to tell you the truth, the Bailey to belly looks more devastating than that Starship yeah, Pain. Ow. Come on! He looks like only 20% of his body weight lands on the guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but... Yeah, but he's spinning and gets so but much he's spinning. Oh, yeah. All right, never mind. Go on. <laughs> Someone agree with me in the comments. Starship Pain looks stupid. All right, someone agree with me. But y'all go ahead. But after that, we have our main uh, event segment. It's not a match, so I can't say main event match. Uh, contract signing. Uh, one of the few that I've enjoyed. I don't enjoy these very often. It is different. Um, I will get some more details on this. Bray Wyatt is shown in a little Firefly Funhouse. He has a fax machine. You can't work a fax machine. <laughs> yeah, can't. That's so he's funny. Trying to, he's trying to fax the contract today, and you can't do it. I um, didn't realize that the um, Firefly Funhouse had internet. I, was like, I know, right? <laughs> I was kind of surprised, actually. <laughs> oh, man. But they don't get tired of that pretty quick, and they trade some words eventually bray says you know oh the mistake gets brought up daniel says mistake and bray's like mistake that's the word of the day <laughs> <laughs> so then he starts uh, running down the history you know daniel portray betraying him and the white family for that short standing i love there. that man i love that it's it, the fiend is working yeah. out a hit list of people who've done bray Wyatt. yeah fiend. that's yeah. What, that's why this this arc really needs to culminate with Randy Orton and John Cena. I'm yeah, telling literally. you, those two guys. Otherwise, that's a huge missed opportunity in the Fiend story arc, like overall story arc. But continue, continue, my friend. I totally agree with you before I do. Okay. Um, but Bray says that, you know, I'm not facing you at the Royal Rumble. The Fiend is. It's only fitting that he signs the contract. Lights go out. Fiend appears. He uh, mm -hmm. gives the claw to Daniel, sister Abigail. And I, at this point, I'm like, the Fiend signing a contract. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm like, they got to do something different here. So, and they did. And it got a nice reaction, I thought. Um, he goes over. <laughs> the, he crowd, the crowd. Is, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense. Go ahead and tell first. Mm -hmm. But the but crowd he, had a perfect reaction for this. <laughs> he, uh, yeah. He. Stabs his hand with the pen multiple times, him, multiple yeah. times. not just once. And, and even before the chant, that Kyle was alluding to. You could hear one man <laughs> say, "You are sick." Yeah, <laughs> and he signs the contract with his blood, and then he starts getting chants saying, "You're messed up. You have um, issues." Yeah, you have issues. Yeah, yeah. You have issues. Yeah. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> so, really. I mean, it got the reaction. I thought it should. The so, thing totally appropriate. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it was so, I mean, good. It was so, good. so hats off. Not too often we give them a credit. But hats off to the consistency. Uh, if you really take away this hell in a cell, there's one big mess up there. But the consistency with the fiend character and trying to make sure everything fits it. That's yeah. something we don't see him do very often. But yeah. um, and that's your that's your SmackDown. Uh, before we get into Specific talking points here. What would you guys grade the show overall for Royal Rumble? Wait, you said that was no, no, no. That wasn't just your SmackDown. That was oh, the phenomenal SmackDown. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, that was your phenomenal <laughs> rundown. Like you guys can't see it, but I'm just flashing it on screen. <laughs> yeah. It was your phenomenal rundown. Yeah, awesome. I figured it. I figured it'd be a good segue. I've been struggling with that. Get... Folks, I'll have him his own graphic by next week. It won't look so, <laughs> so AV club from the seventh grade. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yo, I, what... I do. I do have a question Dude, for you, you, man. Because uh, I, I don't. I don't. You were talking about like culmination. Part of the culmination of that story would be John Cena and uh... Randy Orton. Yeah, there you go. Like, 
I, I never watched any of that shit, so I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Randy, like what, Orton, what is... Randy Orton so joined the Wyatt family and then okay. literally burned down Bray Wyatt's, like, home or childhood house. Where, where like, the shack that Sister Abigail is, built, uh, is buried okay. in. Randy Orton went there and just burned the place down. If you do, like, a three-second Google search, Randy Orton fire, you'll see the video clip and images and stuff. So Randy Orton is, is by far the the most devastating betrayal to Bray Wyatt. Um, okay. John Cena took wasn't his, even took a title too. Yeah, it took his title at WrestleMania. That's that's the oh, Wrestle, that's the match that gets criticized for having like projected like bugs and maggots. Like it just like was a weird WrestleMania oh. match. Um, but John Cena wasn't really a betrayal. John Cena just flat out beat Bray Wyatt in a feud that a lot of people thought Bray Wyatt should have won but i mean that's the common story with john cena is there's yeah. a lot of feuds he won where it would have been better had the other guy won not even a john cena hater here but this is this is almost like public opinion that right, Ray right. wyatt should have won this one and as long as far as his goes you gotta wonder too if wwe thinks that because if you remember in that chamber match at bray won the final pin was against cena so in their mind, that might be enough for that to relay that. I'm, no. Hey, I'm, I'm not saying that. I, I, I need, I'm a, talking, I need a, a fiend I'm squash a, match to see that. I'm, I'm talking about <laughs> that. Man. You know, I, need, I need John Cena to go for an AA on the fiend. And, like, as the fiend is up in the air, he grabs that mandible claw, like, upside oh. down and drags Cena down with him. That'd be dope. That'd be so That cool. would be dope. Oh, man. Can we talk about the Lacey Evans segment? I really want to talk about. Sure, that. yeah, that's yeah, definitely talk about. We'll just, start with that. I refuse. You refuse. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I just, I just want to get into it. Like that, that was. Uh, um, I don't think she had crocodile tears. I think she was legitimately choked up, and uh, it because to the point where it, it wasn't. Um, it was almost too much. It was like, okay, Lacey, you got to dial it back. And also, fuck you to Michael Cole. For watching this chick like literally start crying and not even give her a second like the second she was done with that promo he went right in let's review this tape like dude just react to her emotion for at least a oh, little man. bit like the woman's literally crying in front of you and michael cole is just straight like the most robotic interview like i saw on his end but um no man that touched me man that touched me i i i deal with a long history of, uh, of addiction especially on my father's side I've seen it. I've seen what it does to people, man. And I got a soft spot for that shit, man. I really do. So now, like, Lacey Evans, I'm... God, I hate to say it. But I'm, like, full <laughs> on Lacey Evans now. Like, I really am. Right? I am, yeah. man. I don't know if she's... I don't know if uh, that belt will do as much for her as it's doing for Bailey. But, um... God, I'm I have, think it will. I'm going to have a hard time can. cheering against her, man. Uh, me and Kevin's been on this show for three or four weeks now talking about how great I think this Lacey Evans uh, turn has been and how surprising that fact is. When yeah, yeah. First the face turn like, actually happened at the show I was at. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, that oh, was shit. that was the very first. That was the episode with the dog food. That was yeah. the first time oh, she came okay. out and she had to mention like six times that she was in the Marines. Yeah. I was like, yeah, if I've ever oh, seen yeah, the face turn. The crowd, yeah. yeah. Well, you could kind of go back a little further in that, too, because if you remember Natalia choosing her as her. The Natalia, yeah, but that um, was like the first face promo that she yeah. gave. Yeah. yeah. Um, But no, uh, me and Kevin has talked about on our show before <clears throat> how surprising this turn has been and how successful it's been. Um, yeah. And I kind of feel the opposite about Bailey. As in, when she first turned heel, she was really hot, and all the buzz was about her. And, you know, she's kind of cooled off since then, I believe. I don't um, know. I just think that people like her. Like, that's the weird thing about heel turns, yeah. is it's hard to, to <clears> be, <throat> a, to, like, get that heel turn and then actually get people to boo you. Like, because a lot of people yeah. want to see you turn heel, and then they just start cheering you. Like, I heard yeah. people cheer. Right, when, yeah. when Bailey jumped... Uh, um, Lacey tonight. I heard a bit. There was a big pop. There was a big pop. Yeah. It's like you bastards. This woman just got done <laughs> crying, talking about like losing a family member <clears throat> to substance abuse and being a role model to her child and shit. And y'all freaking were cheering, and then you get in a louder pop the second Bailey cracks her in the back of the head. 
was, I was like, but people, people are heartless, man. <laughs> they just want to see heels do cool stuff, though. That's wrestling fans. No, they just, they just want to see people do cool stuff, and jumping people, for the most part, is pretty cool. That's a heel thing. When, yeah. when I say when I say cooled off, I feel like like she's barely defended the title. A lot of times, she's not on, even on TV. Sasha's doing her dirty work. That's yeah. what I mean. I, I don't. I'm not talk, taking crowd reaction into it. I'm talking about just booking, you know, on TV. If they're making the title feel important. I hear yeah. you. I just, I just don't feel like she has. And Lacey might be able to do that. Who knows? Uh, she's not been in that position before. And two, I think Sasha's a dark horse to win the Rumble to maybe set up Bailey and Sasha at Mania. So if that's a plan, mm-hmm. then obviously it won't happen. But, okay. um... No, I'm like you though. That the promo, which I was behind her before, but the promo hit home with me too. Uh, mm-hmm. I watched my dad. I watched my dad uh, struggle. That's ultimately what led to you know him leaving the world. I think everybody so, knows somebody. That's that's a terrible thing about addiction. Yep. Is mm-hmm. that thing is so yeah. ingrained in our culture that yeah, but, we all have some semblance of a connection to yeah. somebody who's suffered from it or lost someone from it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, my dad, my dad was able to quit eventually, but it was too late. His liver was already damaged, and, you know, he battled that in the hospital for months before he passed. So I, I felt that 100%. The only issue I have, it wasn't really about the substance thing. It was the bullying thing. I feel like WWE goes this route way too much. Well, cause here not too to mention, much. there was no gap between Lacey being a huge bully, exactly. calling people this nasties, and then, yeah. like, then you got a two week yeah. gap to yeah. I stand up against bullies. Yeah, I mean we seen we seen this before with Alexa. We seen it with Nia Jax. I mean just flip flop uh, yeah. right after that. So here in two weeks she might be a uh, heel again and bullying people. That's all. Uh, <laughs> I wish they would keep the bullying thing out of their, uh, you know, little baggage of treats they like. But that was my only complaint. Um, I did say earlier I had an issue with when they came out for the tag match. It wasn't that they came out. I kind of like Lacey having three segments in a row and Bailey. It's just, Kevin, if you remember, how, God, how many weeks have we been on here talking about the time that the women's been getting on Fridays? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that, I, mean I feel like they could have at least had a five, six-minute match and then had to yeah. run in. So, not, not as soon as the bell rang and they didn't right. Because you, you, you had Bailey and Lacey. You had Bailey jump Lacey during her promo. Yeah. We cut backstage. Fire and Desire, right? We're no, giving a, Car- Carmella and Dana declared Car- for the Rumble. Yeah, Carmella and Dana were giving their promos, declaring themselves. Then we cut over to Lacey. <laughs> Lacey slamming the piss out of Bailey into that storage Jesus. container. Hitting Jesus. Her for, hitting her for she as well. You could, you could tell she was worked up from the segment beforehand. <laughs> she was fired <laughs> up. And then so they get pulled apart. Not even but like a minute or two later, right, we're in the ring for a tag match. And a bell, as soon as the bell rings, they run out. Yeah, because you, you had because what you had, you had Fire and Desire set to take on who? Alexa and Nikki. Alexa and Nikki. Yeah, and then bam, brawl in there. I'm surprised it didn't turn into like one of those segments where they all started throwing each other off the top, like over the top rope. <laughs> well, you, that, you really I, I it thought there. it was going because Michael Cole was building the rumble as this was happening. He was like, we could see this Sunday. So many women in the ring. Go ahead. <laughs> so I was waiting on that too, but we never got it. And I, no. get, it that, I get that we... are trying to build that feud. They're trying to get that blood feud going. Yeah. yeah. And and every go home show for the Rumble, you gotta have a, you know, five or six people in the ring going at it and yeah. plugging it. Yeah. But we haven't I, had that cheesy that cheesy segment though. We haven't had no. that. Where yeah. like the whole mid card is in the ring, dumping yeah. each other out. We've had like a couple matches where yeah. at the end they just the whoever wins tosses the other guy out. Like which which match was that that uh oh that heel beat up the face and. Tossed him out afterwards. Oh, God. I remember. It was stupid. Oh, no, no, no. It was Charlotte. Charlotte, Charlotte beat up Sarah Logan yeah. on yeah. Raw. And then after she beat her, she took her and threw her over the top rope because Charlotte yeah. is a good guy. Yeah. Um, never mind. Never mind. That's, that's silly. 
But <laughs> that was my only issue with all this. I just wish that the four women that was in the ring could have been for at least five minutes. I mean, I feel like I know there was a uh, like twelve minute gap between anything really between the uh, Kofi and Morrison match starting and the match before it with the backstage segment, the video package, and the commercials. They could have gave them a few minutes. I thought. Yeah. Uh, I know, Kevin. I mean. Sonya's really been the one that suffers by it too. Remember two weeks ago, Kevin, when you was on here, she got beat by Carmella in like 28 seconds. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Y'all remember how <laughs> hot the crowd was when it came down to her and Asuka in the Royal Rumble? They, oh, yes. They were yeah. frothing for Sonya, man. They thought she was a badass, especially lined up against against Asuka. And they well, never yeah. did anything. Her and Oscar, I f- always felt like when they was in the ring together, had amazing chemistry. Yeah. Um, so that that's my dream match for Sonya and actual feud with Oscar because well, who, I mean they. Who would Sonya have good chemistry with on SmackDown? No, no one. I, no one really, right? Damn. I mean, not on the face side, but but it's shallow. I mean, you got Lacey and she's new there on that side of the depth chart, and then you got Dana and Carmella. But you got to But no one matches Sonya's intensity. See, that's what I'm saying. Now, Sonya has such an awesome yeah. intensity, and one of those MMA style, like legit feeling, um, move sets. I mean, hell, I think she won a couple matches with just like a knee to the stomach. Like she just like mm-hmm. had a devastating kick or knee or something, and she put people out. Um, I want Sonya, man. I, I... Damn, man. She's um, always gonna play second fiddle to. Um, Unfortunately, to Mandy Rose though, because Mandy Rose, her in the face. Man, yeah, and Mandy Rose goes face and is paired up with Otis, and then yeah, Sonya. Oh God, poor Sonya. Should be like, should be like Sarah Logan in no time. Yeah, no shit. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, no dig at Sarah Logan. I like Sarah Logan. Unlike Ricochet, I'll dig at Ricochet all the time. I'm making it a point to bury Ricochet every show I'm on. Jesus, Ricochet, <laughs> Ricochet is not that. He can't cut a promo, but Jesus Christ, don't bury him with it. The dude's a dumpster fire, man. Okay, come on now. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah. I'm going I'm to create a logo of, of him doing a 630 into a dumpster fire. All right. Mojo right. and the Singh Brothers, those are dumpster fires. Yeah, yeah. Ricochet, Ricochet could fit right in there in a fatal four-way, bro. Ah, jeez. Yeah, man. You're a hater. I know. I got I to gotta hate on someone. I got to have some controversy. Speak, speaking of uh, ruined people here. Guys, what's your opinions on Braun Strowman right now? You had him new to, dancing with the New Day not long ago about the scene tonight. Is the monster uh, feeling for Braun gone? Or is he going to be another big show? What do y'all think? What do you think, Sebastian? They're leaning toward big show, I feel like. Yeah, dude, he's definitely in big show territory. And that's so, sad. Once he comes out and he starts doing impressions of other wrestlers, like, really good impressions remember big show man big show could cut a hell of an impression on a ton of wrestlers <laughs> man big show knows yeah, how to do yeah. that comedy what do you think Kev? what do you think of um yeah yeah Seb's same, same question I, I mean i'm into that kind of stuff i mean i get what you guys are saying you know about kind of ruining that mystique if you will about mm-hmm. him being you know but, but like for me, that's kind of gone either way. I mean, it's not like Braun Strowman's brand new. You know what I'm saying? Like, part of, uh, you know, that mystique to me was when, you know, I first saw him. I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, that guy is huge. But now I've seen him a hundred times. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, lost all those title matches. That's the There's that, thing. too. There's that, too. Yeah. You know? So Yeah, you're right. I, I was just hoping, and we kind of see it. Which, Joe's a, such an amazing talker, so it's different. Joe can recover in different ways. We've just been able to see him kind of recover from that sometimes, and I was hoping Braun would be that case. I mean, you can have him win four or five feuds in a row and kind of have him be back near. I don't think he'll ever get him back to near what he was, or where he was, but kind of up there. Yeah. But now that he's out here basically being a comedy at, at times, um, I, just, I don't feel like... It, He's more of a attraction now instead of an actual guy you're ever going to see hold the world title. He'll hold the world title. Don't get me wrong. He'll be like, he'll uh, either win a brief role as like a transitional champion, a feel good champ, something like that. Um, 
But and, it's the same thing as Big Show. Big Show was never a dominant world champ, but he yeah. had it. For, he had it a couple times, I think. You know, yeah. um, they'll, they'll do that with Braun. Like he'll get his hands on the title, but uh, Kevin Kevin hit the buzzword there: the mystique. There's yeah. there's no mystique to him anymore. Everyone knows this is a lovable big dude. Um, yeah, it really started too, not just losing the matches. I mean, a couple of years ago, winning the tag titles with a kid uh, kind of started. Everybody goes thing. back to that. Everybody goes back to that. But to be honest, man, it's been a while since I fought until he danced with the New Day out there. I, I, I just don't know. I mean, what do you there, expect at that point, man? Do you expect him to all of a sudden start pulling scaffolding down or flipping fucking garbage trucks and shit like no like although that stuff was cool that stuff that was stuff cool. was cool oh, i love so that cool. I mean, if you want to get him back over yeah. but, I, I mean, he's, he what's so your cool. favorite what's your favorite braun Strowman destruction moment i think when he uh he broke that car that the saturday night live dude got for him yeah he thought it was too small for him and he just destroyed it and that, that was you know awesome. what you know what was jacked up about that like an hour or two later, Mattel announced the new Braun Strowman action figure with a destructible car. Oh Jesus, I didn't know that. That whole segment <laughs> was set up to sell an action figure. Well, I, I apparently. But they no, it was still cool. Kind of sinker. It was still cool. Yeah, right. Uh. <laughs> my, my, which I guess you can't really count. This is his moment because I actually done it. But I really liked when they went through the stage and. Oh, yeah, that was cool. That was actually that was really cool. My mine's a toss up. But my, mine is a toss-up between actually the segment with Elias where he was, like, playing, like, the cello, like a bass or something. Yeah. Um, and singing or the uh, that from the feud with Roman Reigns where Roman Reigns was getting stretchered out. And, um, and he screamed, I'm not finished with you, and he slung him off yeah. of the stage or whatever in the stretcher. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was brutal. That's when Braun was scary. Like, he was on... That's when, like, during, like, that couple-month period with that feud with Roman, they were like, dude, this dude's got the... A lot of people get compared to it, but, like, this dude's got, like, the Stone Cold aura, those yeah. you know, ultra badass, you know? And then and then the second he sang on, like, to Elias, and he showed he had, like, chops and was funny, oh, uh, it was all downhill. It was so yeah, downhill but, from there. Who well, knows? I mean, they could be setting him up for an epic fucking heel turn too. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, he's not he's not Big Show level of parody with the heel face turns yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Luckily, they're not making him turn all the time. They so, got right. really close to it though with the money in the bank stuff. Right? Yeah. Well, that yeah. wasn't that was because they screwed up. There was there was yeah. like they didn't know what the hell they were doing for a moment yeah. there. Uh, and I think that was also I think like someone got sick or injured, and they needed. Braun in. I don't remember, but yeah. It was close, man. But, um... Well, too, before I do move on, I was about to say, speaking of Roman, but we gotta remember, too, it does look like tea time. And, uh, if he gets it, I don't think there's any way you can have him unless you get him like, be cute or something. But if there's a pin, it has to be Braun going over, I think. As far uh, as what, what feud? What one match? Braun and Shinsuke wants to be. Oh yeah, I think Braun needs to win that shit, man. Yeah, oh, God. I mean, he has to. I don't. Yeah. I don't. If you look at those, he'll so But um, you know, we were talking about Roman. We've seen Baron and Corbin so many times now, uh, and I don't. I guess it really depends on how the setting is. Like they're talking about fighting in center field and shit. And I, I was kind of like trying to imagine this, but they <laughs> said the same thing last year, and it was nothing like. But uh, it would be kind of cool if they had that. So I wouldn't mind seeing them go around like unique settings, and especially if they keep it one on one. What I if what if their them. match was going on simultaneously with the whole event? <laughs> I like that. You know what I mean? That would be like, awesome. we, <laughs> we cut to them and they're brawling in one section of the stadium. Then we cut back. There's a match happening in the ring. We watch that match, and then later on, we cut. They're still fighting, and then we get like the old, the the classic. What was it? The the Piper Gold Dust segment. They hop in like a Bronco and take. Oh off. yeah. <laughs> Yo. I'll take it, man. Yeah, I'll take but, that. Man, That'd be it. hilarious. Book it. I, 
I, I hope they do keep it one on one. I don't I don't want shenanigans like we had at TLC. Oh, there's gonna be a shitload of shenanigans. Are you I don't kidding want me? It, no, oh. you can not want them. But look, look, who's the odds on favorite to win the men's Royal Rumble? Oh, definitely Roman. Right. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. sense would it make to have Roman beat Baron Corbin then win the Rumble? It's not gonna make I, any I, sense. I, I don't. I don't think that Corbin. Roman, if I don't think Roman's gonna be pinned by Corbin three times. If, I can't see that happening. If Roman's sure. winning the Rumble, he's losing the match against Corbin. No. And I, if – I'm just saying. Now, if he doesn't win the Rumble, if he – that that match with Corbin will be a surefire way to know if he is not winning the Rumble. Because if he wins – if he beats Corbin, hands down, he's not winning the Rumble. That doesn't I mean just, if he loses, he's winning it for sure. But he yeah, sure as hell is not winning twice that night. It, if he already didn't get pinned twice by my with you, but I don't think Roman's going to go. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. They'll want it, it, listen to the logic, though. Listen to because it, it makes sound logic. Even because I hear what you're saying, but you also have to think about what they want for Roman. They want to keep people cheering him on, and the way you keep people cheering Roman is you keep him around fucking uh, Corbin because no right. one's gonna cheer for Corbin. Um, no one's gonna cheer for Corbin, so that's the safest bet to keep him cheering for Roman. So You're right, but the shenanigans, the but, you get you get you get what you get Rob Root, you get Dolph Ziggler, you get security, you get all of these things. You're gonna get the Usos in there. Yeah. You're it's, right. It's gonna be a clusterfuck, man. You're right. They that is a good way to get him cheered, but at the same time, wherever Roman wins, we're not seeing Roman and Corbin at Mania. No, yeah. no, 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 no. This, this, one, they, they, can, going... they can ride it up to Elimination Chamber and then mm. from there focus on the Fiend. No, I say Roman will be in the Chamber match. And uh, maybe Corbin is too. Maybe that's a thing. Yeah. But, uh, well, if Roman doesn't win the Rumble, he's in that Chamber match. Yeah, yeah sure. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, um, but if he wins the but, Rumble, uh, he'll probably have to put, like, he'll put his shot up against Corbin at Chamber. And like I said, they're gonna want people to keep cheering Roman on as close up to Mania as they can. And uh, and too, I think that they've already built enough heat with the dog food stuff and all this other stuff that it won't even matter. I never thought I'd have Roman's to hear really that cheated. phrase. They've yeah. built <laughs> enough heat <laughs> using dog food. Well, not just that, but the TLC. I mean, five people out there killing Roman. That's usually yeah. a time when you see Roman overcome the odds. Yeah. And uh, true that. Then true that. So I think Roman gets his win back, and I w we'll get into the Rumble right at the end of the show. He'll get his win but, back uh, during the Rumble match. He'll oh, lose. So. He'll lose to Corbin. Uh, toss Corbin out at the Rumble. Corbin will piss and moan, and then the feud will go all the way to Elimination Chamber. Uh, I think it's over after Sunday. <laughs> I hope so, but I don't but, believe uh, it's gonna happen. Our notes thing, Kev. Your new team, I know, but you have seen two matches of them now. What, what's your impression? Kyle, I don't know if you know this, but before Morrison came back, Kevin didn't know who he was. Yeah. That makes yeah. Neighbor, neighbor did Rob, too. We had two guys that didn't. And that's the thing, too. I've seen so many people on Twitter be like, well, he didn't get great reactions. Not, a lot of people in today's audience don't know don't who know this him. guy is. I mean, You're talking to almost like, what, like a 12 year layoff or something? Yeah. It's close to a yeah, decade. He, he was in other promotions, but you know, a lot of people don't watch that. No, I mean, uh, your, your hardcore WWE audience is yeah. not watching other promotions. Um, yeah. So, Kev, what do you think about him? Dude? What, what's your impression? I'm sold on him, man. He's awesome. I love his entrance music, the whole vibe that he has. It, it's great. And unlike uh, Kyle, I love his finisher. The, the, <laughs> the Starship dude, that Pain. Is that sucks, thing? man. Like, I thought it was great. I thought it was awesome. And, like, uh, him with Kofi was a great uh, pairing, too. You know, really? I thought those guys, that, that match that he had tonight, was, that, that was awesome. Which, so was Big uh, E last week, but I thought tonight was the better of the two, for sure. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah for sure. I, I am waiting on Did you know ahead. he was on Survivor? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, bro. He was awesome on Survivor. He was called uh, Johnny Survivor or something like that. I can't remember. John. No, I think it was just Johnny Wrestling. Cause, it was. Yeah, yeah. It oh, was Jesus. Johnny Wrestling. Um, no, nah, he was. That's he hilarious. was. He was cool as hell. I was cheering him on the whole time. I was like, yeah, someone I know. 
<laughs> but no, uh, but as far as like my um, my like seeing him wrestle all the time, actually there he was more popular during the period where I wasn't watching wrestling. Because I did go on, I think, like a four-year, four, four year, something like that, hiatus. Um, uh, right around the time um, Eddie died and the, and the Benoit uh, tragedy. Uh, gotta bring it up Eddie. Now I'm going to be sick. Well, no, it's just that's, the only, that's like the best <laughs> the time period I can remember. It's because I, I was 19. I didn't have cable. I didn't have internet. I didn't have cable. I was broke. Hell, I didn't even have a cell phone. You know? Oh, if you got the network uh, now, that's probably if I gotta bring it up. Go watch the WWE Untold uh, between Eddie and Rey Mysterio. I still need to watch that it. too. It's a t- it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be, but the end when Ray talks about going to the grave. So if I, got you know what I'll have to do is I'll have to watch that after like with my wife after she's had two glasses of wine. So I'm guaranteed someone else around me is crying harder than I am. You know that's what it, I'm gonna need. It, it got me toward the end. It really did. Uh, well, I believe it, but, uh, man. I believe it. That shit's heartbreaking, man. It is. Eddie's, uh, to me, that's the saddest memory I ever have of wrestling. Uh, me, me and my, he wasn't my stepbrother. My dad dated his mom for a long time, but she never got married. We actually made posters dedicating, like, all his accomplishments and stuff, and we went around school and hung them up and that shit. Oh, yeah. That's cool, man. And, and teachers took them down, too. Yeah, that was kind of nice. Oh, yeah. Um, you got to get that shit to, approved ahead of time, man. Fuck that. You gotta but, get on the uh, student board. Oh, <laughs> good, good. Ridicule. I, I was about fifth grade. I don't even know how old I was. But um, no. Back to a little lighter note. Um, I do expect these guys to have, if not at the Rumble, probably next week on SmackDown tag title match. Um, oh yeah. And I was. Who's, who's the tag champs on SmackDown right now? New Day. Uh, New it Day. is. It is New Day, huh? Yeah. Man. And I wouldn't be. Terribly mad at a title change. I think me as a more good heel. Change. Um, He'll do something. I totally do it. Totally do it. And they're like, a match. Hey, you Morrison know one general. one thing I'm surprised is happening. I didn't think that Miz would be able to be heel again. People love the Miz, but they they've sure. they've been they've been treading very lightly on it, and they've slowly been able to make him a heel again. Test yeah. it. Test it to Miz because. It's it's a hard thing once you've been in the business for so long to get booed because people just respect the work you've done. Like Randy Orton. Randy Orton will never truly be a heel again. He can do heel stuff. People are going to cheer for him every time he hits an RKO. You know well, what Jesus, I mean? Look, look at what happened to Chris Jericho on fucking AEW last on Wednesday. Dude, yeah, people you were know? singing his damn theme song. Like He's like <laughs> was, the yeah. biggest bad guy there. Well, yeah. I mean, it was his. At a, well, I mean, like yeah. I said, but at a certain point, you develop a legacy that makes oh, that people are yeah. endeared by and respect, yeah. and so For they're sure. gonna have a hard time truly booing you. They might yeah. boo yeah. you for a quick moment, but then they'll turn around and cheer you the, the next. Yeah. And um, Miz is definitely treading on that legacy, man. People respect yeah, the hell out of there. Miz. They got a few now. They got Randy. They got. I mean, I don't know how long Styles is gonna be. You know, up and doing the things he can do. He probably moment. got another two years, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If that. But even if he does start to turn, like slow down a little bit and do the, I don't know, say his has knee problems for a certain amount, he's going to have that legacy pop. You got Samoa Joe that's going to have it. They got a few now. It's. Uh, I think Joe could still get booed because I don't think. I think there's a huge portion of the WWE audience that are still new to Joe. They might, they might boo him, but once yeah. he comes out, it's Joe, Joe, Joe. That I mean, is true. One I mean, player yeah. is getting. That's the downside to having a banger of an intro, though. They had to yeah, change. Right? Shin, they had to change Shinsuke's intro just so he could get booed because his intro was that good. They, <laughs> that's why they had to change it to keep people, uh, keep people from uh, cheering along with it. Yeah. I, no shit, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, they changed uh-huh. it during for his heel turn. They had to change. Well, they it. they changed Bailey's too. You know. Yeah. Well, that doesn't make sense. Her her intro is one hundred percent like white bread <laughs> baby face. Like you can't. Well, yeah. Of there's course. no way you could be a heel with that damn shit going on. I yeah. love her like new age like The Rock. Uh, intro. Yeah, it's very rockish. It is very yeah. like inspired by the rocks, like classic intro. That's dope. But uh, last thing I want to talk about concerning tonight's actual show, and then I'll last minute uh, 
Royal Rumble possibilities. The main event we talk, we kind of broke down, guys. This is this the end of and two. Even before I ask that, it, this is a strap match. <clears throat> this is a way if they really want to get that belt off Fiend without having a pin. Hell no! Hell no! They ain't getting that belt off Fiend. <laughs> what the hell are you talking I'm about? I'm just saying. No. Daniel's hot. No. What the hell? No. Yeah, Daniel well, Bryan's leaving in a stretcher. Yeah. Maybe man. a body bag. But, like, based on gross. Kyle's logic here. No, the, the, the he looks he looks great tonight. He, killed, he he left Brian Lane tonight, so technically, you know, Brian has. Oh, the the logic, yes, that one uh, doesn't always pan out, though. Uh, they, <laughs> no, the fiend, the fiend is gonna wrap that shit around Daniel Bryan's neck, toss him over the rope, hang him until he's limp, and then pin him. I'm just counting my no, words. I, That's I how think it'll the fiend's happen. winning. I think the fiend will win via fiend. murder. <laughs> oh yeah, I think the fiend will win. But, you know, we are, ever since the Fiends had the belt, we've been talking shoehorn away to get the belt. Yeah. And this is, you know, it's a possibility. Well, um, that was the, that was the big criticism of putting the belt on them in the first place. Exactly. Take it off of them, you know. It like... And you, and they, I mean, they got to know Brock's limited. Do you really want both champs to have limited appearances and all that? And does the Fiend really need the belt at Mania to have a big profile match? I mean, it, I don't know. It's I don't think he's losing the belt, but you could certainly make the case that, uh, you know, it's there if they want. Um, and two, which we'll lead into it with this because this is a Royal Rumble thing. I think Roman's winning the belt. Or one in the rumble. Mm-hmm. Well, hold up, yeah. hold up. Um, I think I, I meant to tell you this earlier in the show. Let's save the ending of this episode um, and section it perfectly as our own predictions. And then we can put that in the description that it's a SmackDown recap. And then maybe either cut it or timestamp where you can jump to the end of the episode and get our official predictions and kind of coincide that with the other smack draw boys um vince who vince are and jay jay yeah vince and jay are doing the predictions episode over there okay okay because um, I, I had the card in front of me so all right we'll do, we'll do that run down so you want me to run this and that i mean yeah yeah just just keep going what you're doing and then like i said um, I'll read off the predictions card for us. You don't have to worry about it, Kev, unless you just want to get your picks now. I just want to pull them up just so I have a frame of reference. Gotcha. No, I mean, do you? Do I need to like close us out and start another one, or you just? Want no, to... no, 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 no. Okay, it'll, okay. it'll be part of the episode. It'll be part of the episode. All right. All right. Well, I don't have the card in front of me. If you want to, yeah, I'll do it. No, but I mean, anything left for for your portion for this man? No, man. I, I was just gonna throw in some last minute or rumble. Oh wow. Okay. Well. Thank you guys for, for keeping with the, the recap. Um, <laughs> wait, do I do I still have the graphic? No, I deleted the graphic. Oh, well. Whatever. You guys saw it in the beginning of the show. It was awesome. All right. That's cool. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, let's do our predictions. Let's do our predictions. So, on the kickoff show, we have Seamus taking on Shorty G. Uh, Kevin, who do you got and why? I mean, my gut tells me Seamus. Because, like, he's, has he even, I don't think he's had a match since he's returned, has he? Uh, he had a house show match, but that was it. Okay. Well, I can't imagine with the way that, you know, the promos and shit have been going that he's going to lose. Yeah. You know? I, I, yeah, I think Shane's got it. Got it, man. What about you, uh, Sebastian? <laughs> Seamus, he's not losing his first. Uh, so it's unanimous, boys. Yeah, Seamus is getting the win there. That's that's kind of self-explanatory, but if you want a little bit of a dive. He's been gone forever, rehabbed. This is his first match back. Um, it'd be silly to have him lose. It'd be a joke. Um, yeah. Next up, we have the uh, recently announced United States Championship match. Andrade, the champion, taking on Humberto Carrillo. Um, Carrillo, remember, was put on the shelf for about um, – Excuse me, a month or two after Andrade gave him the hammerlock DDT onto some concrete. Sebastian, who you got and why? Andrade, um, I just I think they're going to give him a good type, a good ring. He's okay. been really impressive. Now they Finn, are take, they are. I was gonna say, take note: the U.S. title is the main belt on Raw. 
because Brock's not around with that champion. So yeah. that yeah, U.S. title is the is the head title on your weekly yeah. television. Yeah, I, and I yeah. was just gonna say, you know, they are a story there. If I don't think this is happening, but there's a story they could tell of Andrade being banged up from the wild ladder match he just had, and use that as a career as a advantage. But I don't think it's gonna happen. I- Sweet. What about you, Kev? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I agree. I think Andrade is going to win. Um, I just don't think Rio is quite ready to have, uh, have that belt, honestly. Um, I think, you know, give him a little more time, he's going to, you know, I think he'll get there. But I just, you know, Andrade just won it, and in the way that he won it, you know. The way he can't do it, Yeah, yeah. I just... I can't imagine them taking the belt off him right now, you know? And they could even milk this feud more with him and Korea with this match, too, which is cool with me, you know? So. Yeah. I think Andrade is the safe bet, but for that, I'm going to say WWE is going to take a risk with Korea. And if they don't feel it in, like, an initial two weeks, they'll just hot shot it right back to Andrade. But I think they're going to put a belt on Korea just to test the waters and see how people react to the belt being on him. Um, Because I also, I don't want us all to agree on everything. Um, Roman Reigns taking on King Corbin. We already kind of gave our predictions, but let's just give it a quick rundown again. Um, I'll start since uh, you guys did. I'm going to say it's King Corbin just because I believe it's going to play into the Royal Rumble match. And uh, Reigns is the odds favorite to win there. So I think Corbin's going to win this. I got Roman. He's not... He's not putting over Corbin three times. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, agree with Sebastian completely. Like, yeah, I, he's I, getting his win back. Yeah, yeah. How many times did he lose to Shane? One. It's, yeah, well, that's like the equivalent of like six losses to Corbin. So, um, I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, the SmackDown Women's Championship, Bailey, you champion, taking on Lacey Evans. Probably the hottest angle to come out of the go-home show for SmackDown. Um, these two were at each other's throats. Uh, Kev, go ahead. Who you got? Lacey Evans, man. She, she has so much momentum right now. I never thought, you know, I think we kind of touched on it earlier, just how um, well she would do as a face. You know, based on her character previously, but it's it's worked well. You know, she's been able to um, you know get people emotional, really invested in her and what her story is in and outside of the ring. You know, like with her daughter and shit like that. I mean, I can't. And Bailey, you know, for me anyway, is a little stale. She's had the title for a while now. Um, it's been a pretty good run. And Lacey Evans is the up and comer. You know. Got you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I'm going to say uh, Bailey's going to win it. However, I will say Lace. It's a shame they started like Lacey so heavy into the heel run because I think it detracts from some of the face um, momentum that she has now. Like, I, I think she was best to start out as a heel. But I think had they abandoned it just a little bit sooner and not made her such a blatant bully, um, the face turn would seem more genuine. But that aside, I can't believe I'd say a day, especially so close to her run in 2019, that I'd actually be cheering for Lacey. But (laughs) it doesn't change my logic. I uh, I don't think they have as much faith in her as as we want them to. I think Bailey's going to retain. Um. Well, I will disagree for one part. Uh, I think they do have a lot of faith in Lacey. Um, I think, and I hate saying this because it's, you know, it's a thing. She is blonde. She's very athletic. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) We got to see her butthole that one pay-per-view. I mean, she can talk. She can talk. She can cut a promo. I think everything, literally everything that Vince loved, uh, Lacey Evans had. (laughs) You didn't see the tag match with her and Corbin taking on um, Seth and Becky Lynch? No, I, 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 Yo, yes, I did see it. They got that like, camera like right up her butthole as she got in the ring, man. It was so bad. But, um, I do think she's eventually getting a title. 
I think this. I'm going with Bailey, and it's more to do with timing. I don't think yeah. Lacey's your champ going to Mania. I, like I said, I think Bailey's might, probably going to have Sasha. You know, if they if they play the cards right, I bet she would have a hell of a moment at Mania winning it. If that's the direction they go, but I don't think they're going to. I think at Mania they're going to do Sasha and Bailey. I think they're finally going to pull the trigger on those girls on a huge platform, um, and then we're going to. Yeah. And we're finally going to get the, the TakeOver Brooklyn match that they put on. And that'll be, uh, yeah, that'll be nuts. Uh, so you said Bailey again, Sebastian. Yeah, I mean, if this was like mid-year at one of the B-show, B-pay-per-views mm-hmm. or something, I could see it. I just don't think it'll happen at Rumble. It's kind of what I'm thinking, too. And that's what I meant by not having faith in her, is not fa- having faith in her going into Rumble or into Mania. Mania, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, next up, the Raw Women's Championship, Becky Lynch, the champion, uh, taking on Asuka, the challenger. Becky trying to get her L's back. Um, Asuka's obviously had Becky's number now for over a year. Uh, I'll start off. I'll say um, Becky's getting this. They want to cement her legacy. They don't want any loose ends. Um, I think the person to beat Becky is honestly Ronda Rousey, which is... Uh, probably not going to go over that well, but I think that's where they're trying to go with this. Yeah. Um, that or they're trying to get Becky Lynch a singles victory over Ronda. Either or. Um, but with that being said, I feel like that Becky Lynch is a sure thing to win at Royal Rumble. However, imagine the fucking reaction if Oscar wins. Oh my god. Dude, that Rumble crowd will go ape shit. If Oscar beats Becky again, no. I mean, you could have Kyrie play a part, and if you want to, I don't think this is the direction, but you could drag this out to Mania if you really wanted to. Yeah. So who do you, who you got just, winning it though? Who you got winning? Becky. I like Becky. I said I don't think it'll happen, but they can. Becky, uh, you don't get the win back. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Becky. Uh, mostly, you know, because I agree with the fact that I think that they're, uh, you know, trying to get the Becky Ronda angle for Mania, yeah. you know? I, I absolutely feel like that's where they're going. So, yeah, how, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Um, the last uh, non-Rumble match, the Universal Championship strap match, the Fiend Bray Wyatt, the champ, taking on Daniel Bryan. Uh, you already heard me screaming earlier just five minutes ago. Hell no, Daniel Bryan is not winning here. Oh, boy, boy, oh, boy. He is not winning this. Um, Kev, you going no as well? (laughs) It's going to be a bad day for Daniel Bryan. It's going to be a bad day indeed. I'm going clean, but I wouldn't be shocked. (laughs) All right. So let's get into uh, the Royal Rumbles matches. We'll we'll do a couple couple things. We'll, we'll, We'll bet on the winner. Uh, we'll bet and on two other uh, things too. Uh, so we'll start off with the women's Royal Rumble match. Uh, who you got winning is Seb? Uh, my, I'm going to throw four names out. I'm going to say the, the definite winner. Well, four. don't throw the four names out because that actually is going to be part oh, of okay. Uh, okay. something else. Baszler? Okay. Kev? Well, I kind of gave it away earlier. I think Ronda Rousey. Ronda's going to come her- back. Yeah. Gotcha. I think I'm going to go with Baszler as well. Um, and then I'll start off the next part. Who do we think will be the final four? Um, I'm going to say, obviously, the winner, Baszler, is going to be in there. I'm going to say Sasha Banks. I'm going to say uh, Charlotte and a returning Nia Jax will be the final four. Um, it's a hard one to come up with on the spot, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, before I say this does not reflect what, I, if one person's in a match and it counteracts, I don't think they'd both be in the final four. But um, I'm going to go with Shayna, Charlotte, Sasha, Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane? Okay. That'd be interesting, Kyrie in there. Yeah. I just want to say, last year, I did predict both men's and women's uh, Final Four in my fantasy team. Wow. Wow. Nostradamus. Yeah. 
<laughs> look at how smug you look right now, Seb. <laughs> yeah, I'm predicting that shit. <laughs> what about you, Kev? You got a Final Four in mind? Uh, I would say, you know, obviously Rousey, uh, Baszler, uh, Flair, and probably Banks. You said Banks? Okay, yeah, that's that's a yeah. that's a strong yeah. Final Four right there. Uh, I'll and that the, could help set up the fatal the horsewomen horsewomen match. Exactly, think, exactly. Yeah. I think the um, only four options you got winning though is of course Shayna, Charlotte, Sasha, Sasha and Rousey. I and don't Rousey. think yeah, 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 I, 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 I agree with that. I yeah. totally agree with that. Um I mean honestly honestly I picked Rousey cuz she's kind of a dark horse. Honestly, I think the Baszler has a better chance of doing it. Mm-hmm. But you know, I wanted to disagree with you, jerk. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, this one I feel like is an easy one, but this is more of a question for this for this match just because it's a bigger question for the men's. Does AJ Lee make a uh, surprise return in the Rumble? No. No? Yeah, I'm going to say no. I don't really know who AJ Lee is. Uh, yeah, that's what you know. CM, CM Punk's wife. Oh, okay, okay. She quit the company after CM Punk quit. Oh, yeah, neither one of them are going to be bad. Okay. Um... All right. All right. And finally, the men's rumble match. Uh, I'll start it off. Man, I don't think Roman's going to win. But, you know, I'm going to go. I'm going to go with my heart, not my mind, just because if I'm right, not only will I feel good, I will gloat all fucking year long. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say Drew McIntyre wins. He's my probably number two yeah i think he's gonna go deep he ain't even close on the betting odds though he ain't even close it's just the way they're doing this face round and testing though i don't know man it it feels like they're trying to gear him up for maybe that brought back i don't think so but there's a chance we'll see who do you think is going to win the men's rubble oh rain rain Rain, for sure yeah what about you roman as well I'll say my final four, since I'm saying Drew McIntyre will be in there. I'll say Drew, um, Reigns, jeez, uh, jeez, who's big? Drew, Reigns, Kofi, and um, why not Seth Rollins? Roman... Drew, I really don't want to put three of yours in there, but I think Kofi as well and Alistair. And Alistair, um, did you say Alistair Black? Yep. Oh, damn. Can you imagine the, yeah. the tension in the air, thinking that Alistair might actually win? Ooh. That'd, that'd, be, be, cool. that'd be exciting as hell. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going with uh, Reigns, obviously, uh, Samoa Joe. Ooh, um, like Drew McIntyre. I don't know. I mean, I'm sold on Kofi too, to be honest. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. I didn't want to put him in there. <laughs> All yeah, right. I mean, so I got a cu- I got a couple more um, prop things to ask you, just because there's a lot of buzz about this year's Rumble. CM Punk, does he make a return? Nope. No way. I'm gonna say yes. <laughs> Fuck that. I'm gonna say yes. I think it's time for people to give up on that dream. Nah, he's gonna yeah. he's gonna return. He'll be back in wrestling at some point. He'll be back. Um and then also here's a here's the next thing. How many consecutive people does Brock eliminate before there's two people in the ring? You mean before there's more than two people? No, before there's yeah, before there's more than two people. So before he has the one on one um matchup. Because I think so, I'll, I'll give a little context if you guys aren't following. I think the a th- almost a third to a third of the Rumble match is going to be Brock um, taking just fucking throwing people, just out. throwing people out, and then doing this fucking <laughs> dance, you know, like in the fucking ring, just waiting on the next dude. And then Paul Heyman, if if you remember, I I know Seb, you know about it. Kevin, I don't yeah. know if you have. I didn't actually watch the Rumble till a couple weeks ago. The Sermon Rumble, where CM Punk was eliminating guy after guy and then just hopping on the mic delivering his sermon as part of the Straight Edge Society. 
No, that's awesome. I didn't know about that. Yeah, so he'd he'd eliminate a dude and then hop on the microphone and be delivering delivering a promo. And he did this <laughs> for like six or seven guys. I think we're gonna get that same thing, but with Paul Heyman. Brock will yeah. throw a guy out, Paul Heyman will run down the crowd and then the locker room and then another one will come out. I'm going to say Brock eliminates seven dudes before we even see more than two guys in the ring together. You ready for a hot take? Yeah. Zero. Zero. You think he'll Ooh. get taken out on the first one or he just won't get the first guy out? He just won't get I think the whoever's in there number two is going to be... Damn, you just shot down my whole theory. You're like, yeah, Kyle. I, I'm sorry, bro. Like, that's I, fucking I, wrong. I, I mean, <laughs> that, the number two thing interested me so much because you have so many things. You could put God, Kofi what if, there. What if it's Kofi could, and Kofi gets tossed Kofi. out in like you fucking put, 10 seconds? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. If NXT guys is there, you can put a Matt Riddle in. Or, I Keep feel Lee. like, yeah, I Keep mean, there's Lee so many people that you could put in number two. And another thing, I know you compared it to the CM Punk Rumble. If you compare the Rumble depth now, like this Rumble, if you look at who's in this Rumble, it's loaded. If you look at that one, there was nobody that was really building up at the time, and it's kind of weak. I don't see so many guys going out so easily this year. Okay, so you say zero. You say yeah. Brock doesn't even get the first guy out, and they already and they'll have another guy in there before yeah. Brock starts heaving them over. Okay. I think number two is going to be a cool little storyline thing. It's just going to be a little moment. Okay. Hmm. Well, while I'd like to, uh, I like where you're going with that. Uh, I, I like that a lot better. <laughs> I don't think that's what's gonna happen. I, you know, I think he's gonna eliminate like four or five guys. You know, before there's um, at least three of them in the ring at once. You know. Yo, imagine if Kofi takes out Brock. Kofi oh, throws him out wow. the fucking Rumble. That'd be awesome. Huh? That's uh, that's why I love Brock being in this Rumble. Everybody's like, "Well, it, you shouldn't have your champion Rumble." Number one, New Japan does. Number two, this will be great because we won't have that stupid fucking Goldberg angle. Where Goldberg so many, eliminates him. There's so many cool little storylines you could plug in here. Not just, to, I mean, we're sitting here saying who's number two. Like, when are we? Yeah, no how, shit. What's that yeah, ever gonna happen? That's so, true. Uh, who's throwing out Brock? How many guys? Imagine what if Goldberg Kofi's shows up there. midway? And oh, that, hell I mean, no. Goldberg, stay the hell away this time. Yeah. I don't hate Goldberg as much as everybody else has been hating on him. Stay the hell out of this rumble. No, I, I'm just saying, out I, think, of this I think Brock's going to have moments against or, not, not I, just like a Matt Riddle, but I think there could be a couple from his past. I was about to say, the um, only way I would be okay with Goldberg showing up in this rumble is if Riddle gets in there with him. Yeah, um, yeah, agreed. Yeah, just because of that real life feud they got. Yeah. Um, but Kev, you think you think uh, any, there's any legs on my theory? Yeah, I mean, even if if Paul Heyman isn't cutting promos in between, like I, I just think Brock is gonna be a beast at first, you know. And then like you know, the way that I see it is that as soon as there's you know multiple dudes, they're gonna work together and get him the fuck out. Of it, yeah. You know, like, no, I think it's gonna be a single elimination. You think Brock get yeah. one dude out? That's it. No, I'm talking. Kevin said that there's going to be multiple people throw him out. I don't. Whoever throws Brock out, we'll get. No, no, no. I'm not. I don't necessarily. No, no. He's saying work. once there's more than one, pre one more than oh, one person okay. in there, they can be like, "Hey, look, you and me, let's fuck this dude okay. up." Like, you yeah, know, yeah. Oh. So maybe I, he'll roll under like the bottom I, rope and be out of the match for a minute or something. I think no, no, no. him out is. I think that's a good way to set up your mania yeah. thing. What's crazy so. though is Brock is, is, is the opposite of a marathon guy. You know what I right. mean? Yeah, like within, within like yeah. three minutes, he's purple, profusely sweating. That dude runs hot. You know. Um, so the idea that he's number one in a rumble and actually might be forced to work a match longer than six minutes, there, there, yeah. there is. You're right, Seb. There's a lot of interesting ways to look at Brock in this match. Yeah, and um, two, like, and here's another reason I love it. Not long, not many times can we look at a complete roster on a show and see they're building up so many people at once. Um, yeah. Nobody needs to lose to Brock in eight minutes. On Raw right now, or is nobody? 
Yep, Drew shouldn't lose to him. Aleister Black shouldn't lose to him. I mean, and other than that, there's really no. That wouldn't make it right now. Yeah. So yeah. this makes a lot more sense. Just they won't ruin nobody's momentum. Man. A lot more possibilities. I, I really like that. Yeah. No, I, I agree, man. Um, because thing. even if you had a match where no brawl's winning anyway, so why waste eight minutes on something we already know? Yeah, he's true. I mean, that. No, nah, yeah, that. I've been a firm. I've been a firm. I've agreed with you firmly since you started saying that. It it makes it makes way more sense to put him in the rumble. So much more buzz. So much more to gain than just yeah. creating a. Uh, uh, and enter him at number one too. Like that's yeah. genius. Like you got fans sitting here. Like, are they really gonna let Brock go sixty minutes and win the dang thing? And there's people that believe he will. Hell no. I mean, Brock, I don't, I don't think, think Brock but, probably won't be in that match more than thirteen minutes. I just think he's going to get a lot of fucking people out of there <laughs> right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Probably the very last guy, he'll just German suplex him over the rope onto like a crowd of people. <laughs> oh, man. I just really... That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I'm sweet. pretty excited for this match. I am. It's going in. Yeah. There's so many different outcomes. and Not even just who wins it. So many little seeds yeah. you can plant. Oh, yeah. For sure. All right. Sounds like a, I think that's our show, man. Anything else? Anything else? Thank to you add? for listening to the SmackDown post show slash Royal Rumble predictions. It's been great. Sweet. Yeah. We're marrying the, uh, the Sebastian SmackDown rundown. The oh, phenomenal. The phenomenal. Oh, phenomenal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't make me throw it up here again. I'll throw it up on the stream again. Man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, really quick. Um, some, some, some stuff here. Uh, make sure to follow us on Twitter at the smack drop pod, myself at the Kai Tai show, Kevin at Kevin crazy three sixteen. That's crazy with a K. And then of course your host, the AJ styles of podcast and Sebastian at wrestling fan underscore 32. Don't forget to like, and subscribe to all those places like Stitcher, Podbean. Go ahead, head over to YouTube. Tell us what you think about our new format, man. You guys said you wanted our ugly mugs on camera. Well, here we are. We're trying to freshen up the YouTube streams. Thank you for checking us out there. Uh, leave in your comments uh, who you think is going to win the Rumble match and then um, how you think that I'm a genius for my picks because I'm obviously going to be right about all of them. And then... Uh, what else? What else? Oh, 100 subscribers on YouTube. We'll do a punishment video for Vince. Uh, Vince is still saying oh. we're not going to do that, but we're definitely going to do something. Uh, 100%, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. And then make sure to check out uh, around the same time as this going up. I think Vince will have already put up the predictions episode. Him and Jay have shot. Check out their predictions. Uh, other than that, Sebastian's got the throwback episode. Uh, Jay is going to be hosting that. Uh, oh, Jay's Seb hosting? Jay's hosting. Uh, you're producing. But, um, yeah, okay. so check that out. Uh, that's going to be thrown up Saturday. Uh, along with Saturday night, we'll have our recap for Worlds Collide. And then, of course, Sunday night, we'll have our recap of the Royal Rumble. And we will finally be done eight shows this damn week and i will have been on six of them damn God, dude i'm telling you man i'm about damn, time bro yeah i about time. <laughs> about time. Time to pack up, pick up some slides i can't believe i used to do this all the time i'm i've been spoiled lately i do like one show a week now um that's why no one sees me i've literally just been shooting with like uh vince vince and Jack i haven't shot much. with you like since early december i yeah, I think I'm going to hop on AEW with Rob next week. I miss Rob. Uh, oh, we have a good time, man. Yeah, I know. I know you guys do. I'm jealous. I want to be on that shit, man. Um, I'm not over. <laughs> oh, and um, yeah, like I said, don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, make sure to click one of these videos that are popping up over here, over here to check out some of our other recent videos. Make sure to hit that button that's popping up in the center of your screen to subscribe to the YouTube channel. And once again, you guys, thank you. And until the next time, have a good one. See you.